Right. Let's see how long it takes for us to get to the uh, second crystal here. Pretty surprised that the volcano is the second location, considering most games tend to treat the hellish locations as something they say for the finale. It works for Lord of the Rings and Star Wars as well, so, or at least the Star Wars prequel trilogy. So there's got to be something about using that kind of location that works. Uh, anyway, the big gimmick in uh, the volcano is that every step in the lava hurts us, and there are plenty of moments where we're forced to walk through the lava to get from point A to point B. It's not all that much damage per step, but it's still more than worrying enough, especially since, much like the ma previous major dungeon, I'd like to grab as much of the various treasure chests scattered all over the place as we can find. So it's really going to add to our attrition a good amount, as if the random encounters weren't bad enough. Great. Now I feel awkward for having more and use potions instead of any magic. At what point does it start to get ridiculous how I'm thinking of uh, saving magic points instead of the far more limited items that we uh, brought and will continue to buy repeatedly over the course of the game? Great. Now I feel awkward for having more and use potions instead of any magic. At what point does it start to get ridiculous how I'm thinking of uh, saving magic points instead of the far more limited items that we uh, brought and will continue to buy repeatedly over the course of the game? Okay. Definitely gonna need to use a number of potions on Tyson before the next fight. Damn! Was really hoping that a multi-hit ice spell would do more damage in the volcano. All the enemies in here should be fire-based after all. Maybe it's just a problem that we're spreading the damage out to too many foes at once or something. Uh, or maybe I somehow managed to be under-leveled for entering the volcano at this stage of the game. I don't see how, considering the sheer number of fights we've gone through just to get this far in. Hell, when I checked online, I saw someone on a forum asking if he was underleveled being at Crescent Lake at level 12 and being told no. He should be solid enough to get the job done, and I am at level 22. Of course, that was in a forum talking about the original NES version of the game. And again, one of the things that the BSP version of the game did was increase the health of the various enemies to make up for the fact that we have the MP system to work with instead of the far more limiting uh, magical charge system of the original. So maybe that's throwing things off a bit here. Whatever the case, I'm getting a little worried that I'm somehow underprepared here, but all evidence I can find online says I'm more than reasonably prepped for this. Guess it just comes down to my conservative instincts when it comes to our magic and the fact that half our team are magic specialists when I prefer to do things physically. So we faced a single Earth Elemental per chest in the previous dungeon, and we're running into two Fire Elementals at once right now. Eh, does that mean we're gonna have to deal with three Water Elementals when we get to the Water Dungeon, or... Am I just unlucky at the moment? Well, at least the creature more explicitly made a fire is weak to ice. That's a relief. Definitely running out of potions at a very rapid pace.
all that for something we already have. Kind of annoying, but I suppose that's the price I pay for trying to grab as many items from item boxes that we can, and for trying to buy everything we can from the towns in terms of equipment. It's not like I check what items we grab from item boxes when we check online to find said boxes on a map. We've finally gotten to the point that Tyson can completely get rid of his nunchucks. One less thing to think about as we keep pushing forward. Not that there's a hell of a lot to think about as we're working our way to the next boss. Wait. Fire Hydra? Does that mean the Hydra pokes its head out of the lava? Or because it's actually made of fire? Okay, that was quite a bit of damage done with Tyson's bare hands. If anything, I probably should have stopped bothering with the nunchucks earlier on. Someone just throwing punches is faster than someone swinging a nunchuck. Who would have guessed? Wonder how long it's going to take for Tyson to do more damage per hit than Borami. We may not have many regular potions left, but we've got a good number of high potions. That's certainly going to give us some staying power in here. Okay, I was really expecting Borami to do a lot more damage in his single hit, and I was also expecting the ice move to do more as well. Wonder why I'm getting so thrown off by the Horned Devils here. Uh, they are just remarkably more resistant to both magic and visual attacks than anything else down here as far as I can tell. Bloody hell, it's definitely not pleasant to get hit by Fira, that's for sure. Though it's a good thing that our entire team is around uh, as magically resistant, so it's not like one guy is getting absolutely melted on the spot, while the others are just mildly singed. Really like the visual of embers floating upwards, but considering the sheer amount of lava we're gonna have to work around, I don't actually think that visual touch was needed. We damn well know this is a fire environment. Yeesh! The Hydra is getting killed in a single shot? I really feel like the Hydra should be a lot scarier to deal with than the Horned Devil since we only see one Hydra at a time, while we never have seen a lone Devil show up against us. Am I doing something wrong against the Devils, or uh, did the game designers make a mistake when balancing things in the PSP version of the game? I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so apparently Tyson is severely overkill against one of those lizards. Hell, I probably could have gotten away with sticking with uh, physical attacks in that fight altogether. Okay, considering what we're looking at, I'm pretty sure Wesker's magic is needed. My mistake. Those ooze things are more physically fragile than I thought they'd be. Pff, 
probably should have gone with the multi-hit ice spell, not the fire one, considering the environment we're in. Well, these ooze things really hit hard, at least when they attack anyone other than Borami. Yeesh! Only one ether! And I didn't see it available in the store like potions and high potions, uh... It's a hell of a lot easier to gain ethers in the Pixel Remaster. Does that help make up for how few spells per level you uh, can use considering the very frequent encounter rates in these dungeons? Or is it kind of a wash? Yeesh! That poor fire elemental didn't even get a chance to strike back. I should not feel guilty for killing that thing so quickly. I should just be glad that we're hitting that hard. Since that means, when we run into the boss, it's gonna be relatively manageable. Not that we have all that much of a clue what we're going to be in for when we get to the boss. All we know is that the boss identifies as a woman and uses fire. So probably he's gonna be weak to ice. Wonderful. Tyson is poisoned again. I swear, the poor bastard's been getting pounded far more than anyone else on the team. Does the enemy have some means to be able to see just how much armor our characters are wearing or something? Because we certainly don't get anything like that to see who's weaker on the enemy's side. I'm going based on how fighting against the various repeating monsters generally goes from one species to the next and I occasionally misremember. While there is a spell in Final Fantasy that lets you scan the enemy to see their stats, I rarely, if ever, use it in any of the games. Partly because seeing the sheer amount of health that a boss actually has can be rather intimidating. Not to mention you can't really track the state of the enemy without constantly recasting that spell, which is just wasting turns after a while. And partly because, against recurring enemies, it just isn't worth it most of the time to use since you're generally taking down each individual monster relatively fast, one or two turns. As much as I like the fact that there's a way to track enemy health so our wins don't end up feeling abrupt, the way it's done just doesn't quite feel right so I don't use it. So, things end up feeling abrupt anyway. Guess I'm just gonna have to get used to fighting blind in this game, along with a vast majority of other roleplayer games that followed it. Just two hits and a pair of ogres go down. I've really gotten the feeling that uh, we should be graduating from fighting against ogres this far into the game. We definitely won't have any money troubles for the foreseeable future here, that's for sure. Not that there's really anything at the moment we can buy other than healing items in bulk, as far as I know. It's not like we tend to get a big, easy-to-notice notification in this game about if we're going to be able to buy spells of a certain level. We need to check the status screen, or just outright go to the store and see if we're allowed to uh, buy the spells in a given town. Excuse me for not being worried that we just got ambushed by a Hydra. Mildly annoying that he got a shot off, but even if it was a hit against the entire party, it really wasn't all that much damage to us at this point in the game.
Why were we seeing two fire elementals at a time earlier, but now it's just one at a time, just like the earth elementals before? I'm kind of getting used to things getting tougher the further on we go uh, in various other games. Not easier. Am I just uh, luckier in this particular instance in this dungeon? Hell, we haven't even gotten all that far into the dungeon yet. We're still on the second floor. Granted, it's a very large second floor with an obscene number of chests for us to open. Uh, we've still got quite a bit of distance to travel in order to reach the boss, but still, I somehow keep expecting it to feel harder than it actually is. As much as I like hearing the victory theme, I can't help feeling we've heard it way too often. Mostly because of the sheer frequency we're getting into fights in this game. Anyone else find it funny that the person with the absolute most health points has the most armor? I know the warrior class is supposed to be a tank, but come on, considering how much abuse that Tyson gets, and how little armor he gets to wear, I can't help feeling he should have been allowed to have more health points to make up for that. Looks like there's going to be quite a few chests for us to open in this chamber, that's for sure. We'll see just how many fire elementals we run into trying to open them all. More items that we've already purchased. I suppose we can sell them once we get out of here, and the experience we're gaining by fighting so many monsters, uh, just to crap all of this is probably going to make us as prepared as possible for fighting the boss. Spent in P and uh, the various items aside. Ah, good. We're gaining a few healing items from the obscene number of boxes in here. The more of those we grab, the better. Okay, so the Lava Worm can take a beating and dish it out. Uh, our new Hive Potion certainly isn't going to last long, that's for sure. Definitely drowning in money at this point. We've got more than I know what to do with around here. Literally, the only non-mithril thing Boromir is wearing at this point is his armor. Uh, anyway, that makes 12 chests in a single room. That feels a little ridiculous to me. There was definitely no harm in grabbing everything here, and I'm pretty sure that means we're done with this floor. We just have to uh, work our way to the next floor. Such a shame that I have no clue how long that's going to take since there's no way to know just how many fights we're going to get into on the way out of here. Again, it's kind of easy to see why a lot of role-player games have tried to get away with the whole random encounter thing. But it's been such a thing in the genre for so long that later games that don't have uh, random encounters in it end up feeling off to me for differing reasons. Final Fantasy XII tried to get away from uh, random encounters, and the MMO style of combat kind of felt strange in a single-player game. There wasn't really an encounter rate, just a rate in which some of the beasts in a given area would respawn assuming you didn't leave and come back in. It was very possible to clear some areas of hostiles altogether, which removed some tension. Whereas in this game, even if I'm over-leveled to deal with the individual threats here, the fact that there are infinite enemies on our way to the boss makes it more than a little rough to make it to the boss. Hell, 
It's fairly easy to argue that the trip to reach the boss in the dungeons in this game is more difficult than the bosses themselves. At the very least, I'm sure we've delivered more damage to the sheer number of enemies on this floor alone than the boss can take. But then, the enemies we've been running into probably aren't anywhere near as able to hurt us as the boss will be, so I kind of suppose that evens out. I really wish I could feel even the slightest bit of respect for either the Ogres or the Hyena Dawns. Hell, it's hard to feel much of any respect for random encounters in general, much less when you're able to kill one of them in a single hit. I'm sure that uh, we're going to get some different configurations when we get uh, to some of the later floors, but that might just be wishful thinking considering how long we've been on this floor. Now, considering the sheer number of chests on this floor, maybe the other floors won't have so much. Uh, that would certainly speed things up along uh, as we go to uh, the boss. I've certainly given up on getting to the boss in this clip, though, that's for sure. Probably should have had Tyson and Boromi have different targets so we could avoid chance in this being a little less efficient here. I also should have had more and do some healing since it's not like that hammer is doing all that much damage to these bastards. Right, two more high potions done with. On second thought, let's hold off on using another one just yet. I'm certainly uh, pretty conservative with our resources, that's for sure. Probably more than I need to be. Still, I must be doing something right if we've gotten this far. I'll end the clip as soon as we get to the staircase for the next floor. It doesn't look like it'll take all that long, though. Uh, I just wish we uh, could do something other than just walk through the lava to get where we need to go. But no, that's the big gimmick of this dungeon. A lot of forced environmental damage, even if you know exactly where you're going. I'm not saying it's impossible for someone to figure out how to get out of here without a map. Just that the combination of the random encounters and how many tiles around here are lava, that's really going to wear you down quite a bit. Uh, uh. Not that there's really an easy way to track just how much health you lose by walking down here, outside of just checking the menu screen with every step you take. Did they really make the encounters on this floor just a slight bit easier than the ones on the previous floor? Excuse me for feeling a little insulted by that. Not that one more hyena dawn would be all that much more dangerous for us, but why were we facing two along with the two ogres on the previous floor, but now we're just... Ugh. We're gonna gain less experience and less money taking these guys down. This floor was so short, I think I can include a few more floors in this clip. And apparently, the next floor has more lava and less actual ground to walk through. Good god. I know this is the major gimmick of this dungeon, but come on! At least we gained something in random encounters despite the attrition. Whereas this is just wearing us down for the sake of wearing us down. Please tell me, this is the only time in the franchise we have to deal with this kind of environmental hazard.
one fight so far on this floor, and it didn't even last for two strikes. Good god, am I going to be able to fit another floor on this clip? I forget just how large the volcano dungeon is. All I remember about it is the annoying lava bullshit. Lava bullshit that just goes on and on. If nothing else, this is certainly reminding me of a certain song from Buffy the Vampire Slayer's musical episode. I will walk through the fire, cause where else can I turn? Ugh, seriously, I know it's a volcano, but there really isn't that much lava even in Metroid games. And there's an upgrade in those games that lets you outright run through a small lake of lava with no damage. So what's with this decision-making process? I can't tell. Is it 1 HP per step in the lava, or do we have some other kind of damage rate? Really doesn't feel like this dungeon is doing anything to make the random encounters more dangerous for us as we go from floor to floor. Maybe the Earth Cave was the only one to really change things uh, up with the random encounters as we went deeper, and that's only because there are two boss fights there, one of which is behind a locked door that leads to the final two floors. Ugh. You know, it would be more than a little bullshit if we were attacked while still standing in the lava. Thankfully, it only happens when we're on solid ground, so maybe the game designers realized that random encounters are too disorienting to do. When you get hurt with every step, and getting lost means taking more unnecessary damage. <laughs> <laughs>